we say at Grace Assembly, we inspire people to become the very best before God amongst men as we experience transformation through the ministry of the Word of God. And to usher us into the experience of drinking from the fountain of life, which is the Word of God, we will take our hymn, Ancient Word. Please rise. Make it louder. standing for the word of God this morning I want to remind you that the Bible says when you come into the house of the Lord you must draw near to here otherwise you give the sacrifice of fools. It's time for you to ward off every distraction and put your attention on the word of God on Sunday I had the privilege of sharing with you the word entitled the heritage of the servants of God from Isaiah 54, I read copiously through and to up to the very last verse. And we realize that it is wise for everyone to scramble to be a servant of the Lord. 
Because there are benefits of being a servant of the Lord. I establish to you that it is not the benefit of the men of God. It's the servant of the Lord. We're going to take it a little further this morning as I go to Isaiah 55, the very next verse, which is Isaiah 55, verses 1 to 3. I will read the first two verses, verses 1 and 2, and then I'm going to ask you to join me to read the third verse of Isaiah 55. This morning, on this day of the Lord, I bring you the word of the Lord from the book of Isaiah. And I read verses 1 and 2, and I want you to get ready to join me at 3. The Bible says, Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come and buy wine and milk without money and without price because the price has been paid by the law. Verse 2 says, Why do you spend money for what is not bread? Why do you spend your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, said the Lord. And let your soul delight itself in abundance. And verse 3 together, he said, Incline your ear and come to me here and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Hallelujah. And so I bring you the word of the Lord entitled, The Sure Mercies of David. Rising unto the heritage of the servants of God, and now stepping into overdrive into the sure mercies of David. The same Isaiah 55 verse 3 in the message translation of the Bible says, Pay attention. Come close now, said the word of God. Listen carefully to my life-given, life-nourishing words. Listen carefully. You have been too careless with the word of God. You have been too carefree. You have been too distracted. Pay attention. Come close. Closer now. And listen carefully to my life-given, life-nourishing words. Because I am making a lasting covenant commitment with you. The very same one that I made with David. And this covenant is sure, solid, enduring, and wrapped around in love. Hallelujah. Brethren, I bring you the word entitled the sure mercies of David that a lot of people don't understand. The sure mercies of David guarantees that no matter what, come what me, that you will end well. Can I hear amen? amen. The sure message of David is the guarantee that no matter what happens, you will surely make it. Amen. Father, this morning, I remember that the Bible says, it is the foolish man that puts no value on knowledge. We need to know what God has in store for us. We need to understand that life will huh, throw many banana peels our way. We have seen that bad things can happen to good people. And we have seen the seasons change from a favorable one to an unfavorable one. And today we learn there is an antidote to the troubles of life. With today we learn about the sure mercies of David. They guarantee that no matter what happens, that you're going to bounce out of it and end well. Amen. Father, you are the father of King David. And today you tell us the same covenant you are bringing before us. Because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
we put a serious value on the knowledge of the word of God and the will of God and the counsel of God and the revelation of God, the present truth. Help us now to step up into this sure message of David that it may truly and honestly, irrefutably be well with our soul. Oh Lord God, glorify your son Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit move. Let your presence permeate this place. Let your word be quick and powerful to smash everything that's contrary to us. And elevate us in your love and your blessings. We glorify your name for what you're about to do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let me hear you say an amen. amen. On your way down to your seat, tell somebody I'm here for the sure mercies of David. Tell somebody I ain't going home until I get my sure mercies. Oh, hallelujah. The sure message of David. I am so excited. If you knew what God was going to do today, you wouldn't have come to church alone. When I see the people that are not in church, I think that the devil robbed them. I want to take this time to encourage you, invite somebody to church. Don't just say it. Make sure you bring them. Praise God. And those are the things that makes you a true servant of the Lord. David said, I was glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. You see, when somebody is glad, you know what God is going to do. You know who God is. And if you're glad and you're not selfish, you'll make sure. You'll be a blessing to somebody by bringing them to church. The sure message of David is the title of this sermon. The guarantee that no matter what, you will end well. Can, can somebody argue with me that the life of David is proof that hell can come at you but if you have this covenant you are going to come out on top is there any argument oh I'm going to show you something today you see the sure message of David it is a guarantee it is an assurance and it is a certainty it's not just a guarantee it is a double guarantee it's like insurance and reinsurance. It is one thing for you to have insurance. And by the time you're making your claim, the insurance company is insolvent or broke. But you see, when you insure and your insurance company engages in what is called reinsurance, which means if, you're ins if you go through something, your insurance doesn't have money, the reinsurance company that is, that is very strong will make sure that they deal with whatever wanted to deal with you. Are you there? So find out whether your insurance company has insurance. Praise God. This is a double guarantee. It is not just an assurance. It is an absolute assurance. What did I say? It is an absolute assurance. It is a guarantee, assurance, and a certainty. It is not just a certainty. It is a comprehensive certainty. What did I call it? A comprehensive certainty. When the Bible says the sure mercies of David, the word mercy there, I told you on Sunday, is the Hebrew word hesed. H-E-S-E-D. And hesed is much more than mercy. It is the same word David wrote in Psalm 23 verse 6 when he said, goodness and mercy follows me. Now, hesed is more than mercy. What could be more than mercy? Tender mercies. Another word for has said is kindness. And that word has said is really more than kindness. It is from that word the Englishman coined the word loving kindness. Let me tell you. You are not safe yet if all you get is what you deserve. Because there is a place in time and in life where what you need, you don't qualify for it. You have not earned it. That is where mercy and kindness comes in. I want to let you know the potency of this covenant. And you'll be a wise person to listen. And when I say let us pray, you better launch out into the deep of prayer. And 
perhaps there are some people that have lived long enough like me and you have seen life who has seen life here <laughs> you see that life has many sides when I see a young man strutting up and down like when he just got married I see people come to the altar and they act like this is it because in Coco, I've got the girl okay listen it is only he that is low that needs fear no fall listen the blessing attracts attacks and you have not started having enemies until God blesses you the devil doesn't stone nothing if you see children throwing stones at a tree it is because there is ripe mango on that tree praise God I want to ask him have you seen life or have you seen somebody that has seen life have you seen your your parents see life and you thought this ain't gonna happen to me guess what are you there how many people have been married five years here how many have married ten years uh, those that are married ten years can tell stories glory to God I said glory to God let me tell you you are going to need the sure mercies of David L let me take a little time to explain the difference between kindness and loving kindness kindness is a situation where you need something that you have not earned perhaps your landlord jumped your rent 50% and there's no way you can deal with it and somebody heard you crying and say you sat on the staircase you live in a block of flats you're just crying you don't know anybody can hear you somebody comes why are you crying he says it's not don't worry about just you say no no why are you crying and you tell your story and the person said oh that's sad can I help you and you think nobody does that he says well I want to is that kindness or not so you, you haven't earned it the person extends kindness to you there's a difference between kindness and loving kindness the person can say come to my office and my office is it a papa wolf and when you get to a papa wolf you have to take a canoe to an island and you cannot swim and when you get there area boys are going to have to you have to find your way through. And then when you get there, the staff are going to put you through hell and we will not see you until the canoe has closed and you don't know how to get home. You finally get the little money and you can't even get home. Or on your way home, they collect the money from you. It's still kindness. But when somebody finds you in a situation and sits with you and say, don't worry. I'm going to get my checkbook. I'm going to open the check I'm going to call my manager. They're going to be expecting you. In fact, talk to your manager. And by the way, before I go, let me say a prayer with you. As God did it for me, God is going to do. This is the last time you ever have to worry about rent because this time next year, you are going to be living in your own house too. Is that not loving kindness? And the person says, and honors you and goes. Many times I've needed kindness. But not many times have I gotten loving kindness. The mercy I'm talking about today is called loving kindness and tender mercies. Are you with me? When the songwriter sang the song or wrote the song, a lot of you joined in singing, but you did not know the antecedents or the source of the inspiration of the song. And the song is an old song. And we're going to start re-singing those old songs. Because they never went out of fashion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on now. I have seen the Lord's goodness. His mercies. Can I hear your hands? I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, Lord. You have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh, Lord, you are excellent. Your hands. 
sing I've seen the Lord's mercies and compassion but is it true have you been at a dead end before and the Lord shows up for you and confounds your enemies have you been tied to a place of lack before and your enemy felt that anytime they're passing by they will drop a coin in your plate of begging by the time they came you are not there anymore you are holding behind them in your new car say oh God who are you looking for I have seen the Lord's goodness, mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Lord's goodness. Rhythm. We like the bass guitar. Do, 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 do. You see, this man who wrote the song doesn't need no bass guitar. He wrote the song out of experience. The sure message of David showed up from somebody and he had to write a song. I have seen. Not that I have heard. Not that I have only read. I have seen the Lord's goodness based on his mercy, not based on my ability not based on what I have done. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Goodness talks about God's blessings and prosperity in spite of the fact like David, I screwed up one or two times. His mercy based on compassion. Listen, there is mercy and there's another kind of mercy based on compassion. The Bible says, even if a mother will forget a suckling child, it said, because of my compassion, I will not forget you. Compassion is strong. Don't talk about goodness until you see the kind of goodness that comes from the compassion of the Lord. Ah, the Yoruba man wrote another song. Based on the Lord's goodness, I have seen his kindness, the loving kindness. Ah, Oshemi Lahanu. You sing it, I can't sing so well. Oh, you, know, you know, some of you cannot sing that song. You need to be in a place where they want to stone you. You need to be in a place where shame is knocking on the door. And all the windows have bars. And the back door has been locked by your enemy. And what is going to get you is about to knock down the door. And God just opens the roof and takes you through the roof. Ah. You know, you know when the songwriter says, Eh, hey, ah, uh-huh, it means, ah, uh, I don't know how to explain it. So, ah, uh-huh, hey, hey. If only you knew my story. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. If only you knew what God brought me through. Hey. If only you knew how close I was to forsaking the way. If only you knew I was about to receive that money before God showed up. If only you knew my story. Hey, hey. You help me sing that song. His love Is there anyone here that has benefited from the kindness of the Lord before? Give him a shout! Hey, oh, my God, send me love. Hey, 
know that I'm talking about the sure message of David? Do you know that some people took stones ready to stone the king? After what he did, they knew what happened. By the time the prophet said, you are gone, some people thought, Saul did a lot less than that. God took the kingdom from his hand. Some people were getting ready to take his seat. Ah. Then he says, Oshemi Lanu. David. Can I, can I tell you something? Two kings were chosen by God. One right after the other. The first one was Saul. Nothing was registered against Saul other than two things. The unlawful sacrifice and the fact that he didn't kill King Agai of the Amalekites. Do you remember the story? And kept some good things. He said he wanted to sacrifice, but I don't know whether that's the truth. Alright, two things. It was the same Samuel that God spoke to about two men. It was the same Samuel that anointed. In fact, Samuel loved Saul so much that even after God said, I'm done with Saul, he was still crying. And God said, stop crying over Saul. But David came along. If it's the sure message of Saul, I will pray for it too. The sure message of David, let me show you what David did. David committed an unlawful census that killed 70,000 men before God stopped the angel. The angel was going to wipe out Israel. David committed adultery. Hey, hey. Ah. David didn't stop there. David arranged for his friend his friend, the husband of his waiting call to be killed it is one thing for you to take what is mine it's another thing for you to kill me because of it let's count Saul did two David did one census, two adultery, three murder, that's not all when you balance the sin of both of them, who has sinned more by now? Okay. David did something that was worse than everything else. When the Ark of the Covenant was being brought back, God killed Uzzah on the way. And because of that, David dissociated himself from the Ark of God. It's like somebody saying, I want nothing to do with the presence of God. And so, Bible says the ark was taken aside meaning that out of the plan and it was actually dumped in the house of Obed Edom Obed Edom's house was small he was not a big man the ark was supposed to be in a nice big place like this Obed Edom had no choice what David did was terrible you took an ark that people should not come near into a small house so small that there's no way you pass it you won't brush past it left it there, you know what God did God blessed Obed Edom so much in the space of three months the blessing of Obed Edom from when the blessing of a poor man gets the attention of a king and come back so let me tell you some people say that he brought the ark back, see what you do it's not as important as why you did it. He did not bring the act back based on responsibility or love. It was the jealousy of the blessing on Obed Edom that provoked David 
to go back forget his problem with God and take the ark back now tell me that's the fourth thing he did that one alone in my own opinion is more than the two that's all did before you say Saul the kingdom was taken from him he died a shameful death on the same day with his two sons his lineage was erased there's nothing after Saul David lost a son I know but from the same womb the greatest king that will ever live was born David died old. Bible says David rested with his fathers and he was buried with his fathers in the city of David. Saul died tragically in battle with his two sons. When I'm talking about the sure mercy, the tender mercies, the loving kindness, that even when you mess up, God finds a way where there used to be no way. Let, let me ask you, let me ask you, let me ask you, as a righteous judge, should a thief be allowed to keep what he stole? So how come David cared Bathsheba? And how come God brought forth Solomon from the same womb? Let me tell you something. Your judgment can never change anything about God. In God's court, there's no appeal. That is the meaning of the not mighty, the almighty God. When you ask God why, it's not as if there was 10 generations between them. It's one right after the other. So it's not as if God has forgotten about Saul. He will tell you the reason is the sure mercies of God. Are you here today? Do you know you may have or you may still knowingly or unknowingly do something that really you should be killed for. Something that should crush your marriage. Something that should wreck your ministry. Something goes wrong and you don't even handle it well. If you are devoid, if all you have is the blessing of God, but you lack the sure mercies of David, the end may not be good. The sure message of David is the guarantee that no matter what, you will end well. And this is what I present to you today. You may sit down. I just want to also show you. Help me put up Psalm 27 verses 1 to 6 on the screen. I want to show you. You see, people don't understand why what happened to David the, and why he wrote the way he wrote. You see, when you read the psalm now, against the backdrop of what I'm saying, it will come to life before you. Psalm 127 verses 1 to 6. And please behave yourself up there. Let's read. It says, unless... No, Psalm 27, 1 to 6. Why are you changing it? It says, read me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foe, they stumbled and fell. No, no, hold on a minute. It didn't say I counter-attacked them. It didn't say I had the means to rage against them. They stumbled and fell. Somebody tripped up your enemies. They stumbled by themselves and they fell. Verse 3. Come on, let's go. It says, Though an army, an army, 
because I saw that one that was just my enemies now there is an army so though an army may now encamp against me my heart shall not fail though war may rise against me in this I will be confident in what? in the sure mercies of David in this I will be confident verse 4 one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord because goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever you see it is the experience of the sure mercies now makes David say, after this, nothing will separate me from God. May we have that kind of experience. A very compelling experience. Verse 5. For in the time of trouble, he's explaining why he wants to dwell in the temple. For in the time of trouble, come on now, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle. Come on now. He shall hide me. He shall set me upon high. Somebody say high. Upon a rock. Verse 6. And in closing now my head. Come on now. Shall be lifted up. Above my enemies all around. Therefore. I will offer what? The sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, oh, I will sing praise. I have seen the Lord's goodness, his mercies. You see, when you see David dancing before the Lord, he knows why he's at. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent in my life every day. Oh Lord, you let me let me let me let me talk to you. Let me tell you. Jonathan was faithful to his father. Even though David was his friend, he never struck his father because of David. But you know what happened to David? Absalom, his own son, and he loved Absalom to a fault. Absalom was the one that did David in. Absalom dealt with David. You see, you haven't seen life, you have not seen life. David ran out of the city of David, David ran barefooted. Absalom won even Ahitophel and won the hearts of the people. You know, sometimes the reason why you should worship God is not just because you're already blessed. You should worship God in case of in case. You know, I know people that practice nepotism, which means once it's your family, everything is okay. Well done. What did I say? Well done. The son that David loved, possibly the most, was Absalom. That's the one that did him in. Can I tell you something? Except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain. You see, your love is good. But your love is not the compelling factor to guarantee behavior of your loved ones. If the heart, Lord, does not direct the heart of man. You can love somebody and it's still the person that will collude with your enemy to put your life out. Oh, you think the Bible is a joke? It ain't a joke at all. I want you to help me. Psalm 124. We're going to read it from beginning to the end. Psalm I, I just want to show you the potency of the sure mercies of David. This is David again saying, if it had not been, oh, come on now, help me read it. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. It says, let the whole of the church, Grace Assembly say, 
Verse 2, come on, come on. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. When the wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us and the stream would have gone over our soul. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. But blessed be the Lord who has not given us a spray to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made the heaven and the Will somebody give the Lord a shout? If it had not been for the Lord. Oh, you, I need to tell you my story. I need to tell you my story. If it had not been for the Lord. The lie. Spoken against me should have terminated me. But the same God caused the lies to be exposed in public. Banga. And I didn't have to say a word. <laughs> uh, oh. The heritage of the servants of the law. The sure mercies of David. Let me tell you a little bit about David. Before I tell you about David, Saul never went through anything. The Bible says Saul was the son of Kish. Kish was a rich businessman. And Saul was so blessed even physically. Can I tell you, your physical attribute is a gift from God. The Bible says he was tall and handsome. From the shoulder upwards, he was taller than any man. And women like tall boys. Am I wrong? But some short men like us, we see got something. David wasn't tall. Hallelujah. I said David wasn't tall. But he was okay. I said he was okay. Now Saul was the son of a rich man. And he was loved. You're laughing, eh? See me after the service. <laughs> Femi, your husband and I, were in the same rank. Oh, you are tall. <laughs> Now, no, that's just rascality. Now, Saul was the son of a rich man. And his father loved him. And he had many servants. Even when they sent him for a simple assignment, his father said, take one of your servants. He didn't say, take my servant. Take one of the... How many servants do your parents have? If they say, take one, you say, which one? <laughs> you only have half. <laughs> Take one of the servants and go and look for the donkeys. Saul didn't have any problems. Whilst looking for a donkey, the prophecy made him a king. But let me tell you the story of David. That's why he needed the sure mercies of God. Because even in his family, David was rejected. Hello somebody. When Samuel came to the house to anoint a king, did they call him? Did the father remember him? David was not only rejected. You see, he's, see, if your life has troubles, you are the one that needs this covenant. The last born is usually the one that should enjoy the most. Is that not so? Is that not so? David was the last and he was the one that was not liked. The brothers joined the army. They went to Sandhurst Military Academy. He was sent to look after Ogufe. How can the difference and the disparity be so much? And they were the same father. When he got to the battle, he didn't go to the battle to go and fight. His father sent him to take sandwiches to his brothers. Your brothers are doing mighty things. They're sending you on errand to go and give them food. David was belittled by even his father. 
David should have said, why would you not let me be one of Saul's captains? I'm an equal brother like the rest of them. He took the sandwich. When he got to the battle, can I tell you what happened? The brothers looked at him and said, what are you doing here? It is not people like you that they want here. They were all dressed in starched uniform. They were all dressed with shiny boots. They, they, they were in battle formation. And he came smelling of Ogufe. And he said, what are you doing here? It is not your kind that we want here. Your own brother. He said, who did you leave your few sheep with? You know, how people describe your business can be very painful. That corner shop that you're running. You know, street hawkers, all they have is on their head. They say, what are you doing here? We are talking about shop right. You're bringing your little basket. They said it to his face. So, he was rejected. He was belittled to his face. Man had troubles. And when he killed Goliath, And was serving Saul, singing so that the crazy man will be okay. The reward he got was spears thrown at him and javelins. And I know some people are here, you're wondering, how come I have served so much and all I get is insults? Beyond the javelins, he suffered betrayals. Cool the towers were planned against him. Rebellion rose against him. Absalom led by Absalom, his beloved son, who he loved so much. And then his general, Ahitophel, joined with his son. You see, if your son and your best man say you're a bad man, it is likely for people to believe them. I rest that matter. Your own son and your best man. It's like Diomi and Pastor Omi saying, I'm a bad man. Won't you begin to say, ah, there must be. That's what happened to David. David that I'm talking about, the lion came at him. A lion represents your worst nightmare where there was nobody to help you. And after that, the bear showed up again. And then he had to face Goliath with a catapult. He went through hunger. When he ran from Saul for his life. He was on sex, self-exile. Listen, Saul moved from his father's mansion to the palace of the king. David went from the backside of a wilderness with few sheep and went into exile. Self-exile. Nobody sent him to a cave in Abdullam. And then from there he moved to the wilderness of Ziph. Then he lodged in the wilderness of Engedi. And then he finished his exile on the ascent of the Mount of Olives. One man. And all this happened before he was 30. Because at 30, he was now king of Judah and Israel. All this happened from 0 to 30. One man. And the man that went before him never went through any of this. And it is this man that ended well. Can I tell you something? It means that it doesn't matter how life starts. What matters is the covenant that you have. Where is Saul, the son of a rich man? The first king ever of Israel. But where is David today? Even Jesus till tomorrow is called the son of of David. What am I saying that against all contingencies and all eventualities, the future of David was secured by the sure mercies of David. Well, I call it an all risk insurance, an all risk, no risk exempted against all eventualities. And the way it is captured and best captured is, is in Psalm 89. Can you help me? Psalm 89, I'm going to read verses uh, 20 to 34. Psalm 89 and I close. And I'm going to lead a prayer. And particularly those of you that have children or want to have children. When you see what Solomon got out of this short message of David, you will pray today. Do you know that Solomon had no glory of his own? 
Solomon stepped into the sure message of David and everything worked for him. Praise God. If you love your children today, you will pray. If you don't have children yet, you will prepare the way for them. Let me read Psalm 89 for verse 20. I'm going to read fast because my time is gone. It says, I have found my servant David. It is a servant thing. Incline your ear to me. Hear me. Obey what I say. I have found my servant David. God is always looking for a David. I have found my servant David. Now, with my holy oil, I have anointed him. With whom my hand shall be established. And my arm shall strengthen him. The enemy, no matter what, shall not outwit him. Nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will, oh Jehovah God. He didn't say an angel. He says, I will beat down his foes before his face. And I will plague those who hate him. But my faithfulness uh, and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name, his horn shall be exalted. Also, I will set his hand over the sea. And his right hand over the the rivers. He shall cry to me, you're my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him. Ah! God says, I will make you. <laughs> you don't understand. It's not say you will try and make yourself. It says, I will make you. It says, I will make him my firstborn. The highest of the kings of the earth. And my mercy or my said. I will keep for him forever. And my covenant of the sure message of David will stand firm with him. His seed also I will make to endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. He now says, just in case his sons forsake my law and they do not walk in my judgments. If they break my statutes and do not keep my commandments. He said, this is what I will do. I will punish them. I will punish their transgression with the rod. And their iniquities with strife. Never be less. Don't imagine I will kill them. Don't imagine I will rubbish. Nevertheless, my loving I will not utterly take from him, nor my allow my faithfulness to fail. It says my covenant. People quote this as if it's talking about every other covenant. It's talking about this covenant, my covenant with David. Of mercy, loving kindness, and tender mercies, I will not break. Nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips my servant the one who will do all my will he says I have found a man after my heart this thing I'm talking about not everybody can get it who will carry out all my desire are you here today stand to your feet I have found my servant He's not talking about people who come to shop for a blessing in church. I have found my servant who stand in the house of the Lord at night. No wonder the psalmist says, I would rather be a doorman in the house of God. If this is what I'm going to get. Can you lift up your hands and talk to the Lord? Life can take a turn at every point. Life can play a trick on me. People may plan a coup d'etat against me. I can't tell what tomorrow will bring. Even the children. Oh, the, the psalmist says, I used to go into the house of the Lord. But it was my friend who shared my bread with me. That raised up his heel to kick me in the teeth. Oh, I have seen people lose their fortune and their fame. I have seen wives say, I'm not doing anymore and I'm going. Nothing you say is going to make me come back. I have seen people fall ill who have muscles and look so fit. 
<laughs> and you can't even understand it. But the sure mercies of David guarantees that no matter what, you are going to end well. Oh, let them reject you. Let them belittle you. Let them throw javelins at you. Let them betray you. Let them rise up against you. Let's, let them send the lion and the bear. Let, you even have to face a Goliath with a slingshot. Even hunger. Even exile. Whatever happens. The sure message of David. Doubly guarantees that I will end well. And multimedia bring me the scripture Malachi 3 17 to 18. Before we sing that song, I want to show you. See, maybe you're here. Your story is almost like David. Too many troubles in your life. Maybe your story is after you solve a huge problem. When you're supposed to be resting, another one rises. There is a covenant for people who can come through all of those things. Malachi 3, 17 to 18. The message translation of the Bible is my closing scripture for today. I want to pray. I need to pray. It says, God of the angel armies said, they are mine. All mine. It says they will get special treatment. Everybody will get treatment. But some people will get what? Special treatment. It says they, I don't know who they are, they will get special treatment when I go into action. It says I will treat them with the same consideration and kindness that parents give to the child who honors them. It says once more, as in the days of David, you will see the difference it makes between uh, being a person who does the right thing and one who doesn't. Between se- those who serve God and those who do not serve Him. Is there anyone here that wants to subscribe for this covenant? Lift up your hand and say, Lord, I will serve you. I will be a true servant. I will incline my ears. I will draw near to you. You will speak and I will hear you. You will instruct and I will do it. I want that covenant. The everlasting covenant. Of the sure mercies of David. Over my life and my children and my grandchildren. That you will keep us no matter what. That I will end well no matter what. The songwriter must have known this. When he wrote the song, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. That they may be new every morning and every morning. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Today you're being enriched with the knowledge of who he is and who he wants to be to you. 
and you realize this should be the person I'm the closest to and this morning you've taken a quality decision to say I'm going to give my life to Christ if this is what it's all about I should have done this a long time ago wherever you are I want you to come towards me I want to pray with you anyone here who wants to embrace the Lord who guarantees this everlasting covenant maybe you have been coming to church but you never really stepped out to embrace the Lord this is your moment take a stand for the Lord and he will take a stand for you you can't just sit back there and you will not stand up before men to say I belong to the Lord it doesn't work like that wherever you are come towards me I want to pray with you very quickly the steadfast love steadfast love Is there anyone coming this morning? I want to pray with you. Or is there someone here? You departed from the way of truth. You backslid. You went back to your old life. But you feel the Lord calling you this morning. I want you to come forward. I want to pray with you. Wherever you are your way back to the Lord. Heaven is waiting for you. Maybe there is, there are people here that your life has been so troubled and you've heard the antidote to the kind of tumultuous life you have been experiencing and maybe you feel that if I pray for you this covenant will be activated very quickly over your life I want you to come because on Mount Zion there has to be deliverance wherever you are you want to come quickly It doesn't mean you don't love God. It doesn't mean you don't pray. But somehow it's just been a raw fry. Father, I pray this morning. That by the sure mercies of David, that the yoke be destroyed over the lives of my sisters and my brothers. That the same way the yoke of belittling, the yoke of shame, the yoke of little, the yoke of ignominy was destroyed over the life of a David. Who above his brothers that looked more princely than him. Became the king. And the only king that sat on the throne. And handed over to his son in his lifetime. Father I pray. The same mercy. The tender mercies. And the loving kindness. Be superimposed upon this lives. Because you are the same yesterday to death forever. As you do this, Lord, I know these ones will not stop giving praise to your name. They will testify to the goodness of your name, how that you came through for them. I perceive that for someone here, a deadline is knocking on your door. Who is that person? There's a deadline. I don't know what the deadline is. There's a deadline. And the deadline is approaching maybe the person is not here, maybe the person is worse as the deadline is approaching you have no clue, you have no answer you don't know what you're going to do and it looks like the bottom is going to drop out I want to pray for you, whoever that person is this hands up, Father I pray in the name of Jesus that before the deadline arrives, the Lord will arrive Amen. the solution will arrive Amen. 
if they were bringing handcuffs for you, they're in for a disappointment. Because the Lord has set you free. And he whom the Son sets free, I declare to be free indeed. Howsoever it's going to be done, let it be done. To the glory of the name of the Lord. So it is. In Jesus' mighty name. I want you to rise. Look at me. Look at me. It's about being a servant. It's about really being a servant. Servants stand at attention until the master goes to sleep. Servants don't go on vacation unless the master releases them. It's about choosing to hear the Lord. What you have done wrong in the past doesn't matter. It is what you do from now. When he gives you an instruction, don't question it. Just obey him. That the covenant be kept alive. I can tell you, I have seen many rough days. And the one thing anybody will say about me is that guy. He's like a rubber ball. You push him inside water, he bounces out. And it's not my strength. It's a covenant that keeps me alive. I want you, lift up your right hand and say, I will serve you, Lord. It has nothing to do with pastor being around. Where there is nobody, I will serve you. With my heart, I will serve you.